Hi everyone, welcome back to chapter four. This is part two of molecules and compounds. And in this part, what we're gonna do is we're, we're gonna write the names from formulas and the formulas from names of ionic compounds. So ionic compounds, remember, are going to be between a metal and a non-metal. And they're gonna be, so the, the metals are gonna be cations, which are positively charged, and the non-metals are going to be anions, which are negatively charged, and then they are held together by ionic bonds. Now, we call them ionic bonds, but remember that they're really electrostatic forces. Just like um, when you walk across carpet sometimes and you get shocked, that's an electrostatic force. So that's what's holding these guys together. And so, um, you might have NABR, Al2CO33, um, et cetera. Notice that they go together in certain um, specific ratios. The basic unit is called the formula unit of an ionic compound, and that's the smallest electri electrically neutral collection of these ions, so the whole number ratio. It has to have the same number of pluses and minuses in it, okay, because overall it needs to be electrically neutral in order for it to be stable. And so and the example here is a sodium is a plus one and a chloride, chloride is a minus one. And so when you put those together, they go together in a one to one ratio because there's one plus and one minus. Now it's not always that easy. Now the formulas of um, these compounds are based on their charges. And I already said they had to be neutral. Okay, so if one of them is a plus two, then you may have to have more than one of the other one in order to make that neutral. And so that's what they're trying to show you in these examples here. In the case of aluminum, aluminum is a plus three and hydroxide, which is a polyatomic, is a minus one. So since you've got three pluses and only one minus, you've got to have three of those that are the minus one, so that when, so, so it, it, when you end, you'll have three times the minus one. So you'll have a minus three and a plus three, and they're neutral. All right, so that's what we have to look at. Now, if you recall, I told you to do something when we were looking at the periodic table in one of the previous chapters, I said put you a plus one, plus two, plus three, skip, minus three, minus two, minus one. Those are your charges. And so if you can remember that pattern, then you can very easily put these together. Now in this first one, I'm telling you what their charges are. Um, in calcium, in these, in, there's an error on this figure. They should be twos. Okay, so magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, those are all in, in group 2A, therefore they are plus 2. So we know better than even the book, right? Okay, so you've got Ca2 plus and O2 minus. Now, when you put these together, um, you can do this mathematically, okay? Now, obviously, you've got a 2 here and a 2 here. So they're going to go together in a 1 to 1 ratio, okay? What we're going to do, though, is what I call the swap and drop, okay? The swap and drop is where whatever this number is is going to go here, and whatever number that is is going to go there. Notice if I do that in this case, I would have Ca2O2, but is that the lowest whole number ratio? No. So I just reduce that to CaO. And the reason I show you that on this one that's super easy is because when they're not super easy, the swap and drop works great. All right. And so then this, the for practice, it wants you to do the formula between aluminum and nitrogen. Okay. And so I'm going to go to my um, chart here. So aluminum is a plus three, nitrogen is a minus three. So again, those are already one to one, so they will just look like that. And sometimes they're gonna look funny, okay? But you've gotta follow the rules. If you follow the rules, you're good. So that's how we're gonna draw them, just by making sure that the pluses and the minuses are good. When we name ionic compounds, okay, we're going to usually have, in, in this course, we're going to have what we call binary compounds. 
binary compounds are like two things together like we just saw all right the if you're you have an ionic compound if you have it between a metal and a nonmetal. now some and those remember that I, sh I showed you the um, 1a 2a and then um, 4a 5a 6a no 5a 6a 7a etc those are your representative remember that representative elements and that means that they follow the rules so those only have one charge no matter what okay so your alkali metals your alkali earth metals and then some of your other metals will only have one charge okay because when you go to your transitions in your D block and some in your P block they can have variable charges and these are going to be the metals okay these metals can have different charges and it's because if you remember when we had those D orbitals and the P orbitals and they all got really close together and sometimes they would jump to the S before they finished the D and all that not following our nice little rules that's why we get these degenerate orbitals and that's why we see this uh, phenomenon here where they could be a plus two or a plus three so that gives us a little bit of a challenge but we have to make sure that we can communicate what that is okay so binary compound means you're going to have one metal and one non-metal one type okay now you can have more than one of each of them but you can only have one type so a binary a binary ionic compound would be potassium chloride K and CL so notice what I did the metal keeps its name the non-metal drops whatever it ended in and now ends in IDE so potassium instead of chlorine it's chloride CAO is calcium oxide so it's no longer longer oxygen it's oxide all right and they all these little binaries work this way okay and it doesn't matter if you have more than one of them you still just name them that way so ca is calcium and br used to be bromine right so I drop that and add IDE so it's going to be bromide so this is going to be called calcium bromide notice I do not tell you that there's two bromines in there why because this is the only way that this can go together so I don't have to tell you there's two because I know calcium is a plus two bromine is a minus one so I have to have two of those that's the only way they can go together because I have to have two of those to make that a negative two when I have a positive two for a neutral atom and then you're going to do this and this is my second favorite element and it's used to be called argentium back in the day now we call it silver all right so you can look up and see and silver does silver has the same charge always okay so you can figure out what it is by looking at it maybe all right and then you're going to write the formula for rubidium sulfide okay rubidium is rb because we also have something called ruthenium which is ru All right, and that is your introduction to writing and naming ionic compounds.